So, you think you're going to take top spot around here, huh? Let me tell you something. It's not going to happen, motherfucker! You got that? You better. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, we're going to take a look at the latest wave of Jazzwares's... Jazz... Jazzwares's? The Jazzwares Fortnite Legendary series. I was able to snag all of these on Amazon, but I have been hearing they're hitting Walmart right now. But before those Amazon listings a couple of weeks ago, we didn't know anything about these. They had told us at Toy Fair future offerings, but not exactly what was coming and when. And during the weeklies, I usually throw Jazzwares some shade because we're so used to knowing about stuff in advance. Far far in advance but once I have these in hand I I kind of like the oh ah, the listings oh that's what's coming and then have it in a week there's something that calls back to my childhood maybe we didn't know every little bit of information about toy companies and their offerings and the lines and when they're coming out and what's coming and there's something cool about that but in this wave we get drift X Lord gonna give it to you scavenger the eternal voyager and then who may be my favorite out of the wave without even opening it up yet is fish stick oh your favorite huh doll it back you're neither beefy nor bossy enough to tell me what to do and we'll talk later big nice open windows lets a lot of sunshine in you get to see everything that comes with the figures on the side artwork from the game on the back pretty plain you get the picture of the character and a small tiny bio drift journey into the unknown and find your way to victory a turtle voyager from beyond the shadow of the galaxy's edge. Ex-Lord Scavenger, ransack every dimension. On the other side, same thing. On top, window let the light in. On the bottom, legalese, barcodes. But let's go ahead and open Eternal Voyager first. Cutting the tape, cutting the tape. And I didn't pick Eternal Voyager just because I figured he would be my least favorite. Or maybe I did. And it's not because of the execution or the sculpting or anything like that. I just don't care for the, I don't know, the proportions maybe? But that may change with an accessory or two. Because really, body-wise, there's the jacket and it has these, what are these strappy things going up over the shoulders? Those go all the way around, but there's some kind of buckles or something up here. But then the jacket itself is integrated into the torso and it doesn't feel or seem like a jacket it seems more like part of the shirt design or the whole thing's a jacket and this is some kind of cosmic enclosure that opens up it dematerializes or something but i love the randomness of the design here you can see it better right there but that's the fun thing about these because the characters themselves aren't ingrained in my brain i look at the figure and it's like wait what's that and that's fun and look at that and oh my god squiggles a little bit on the crotch piece and it comes down to two more buckles that are soft plastic are those separate pieces? The squiggle line down back to the legs. And why is it blue down here if this is some kind of cosmic enclosure? He's got to go to the bathroom, right? Is that around that? Yep, there you go. But then it continues the leathery look on the outside of that down to the legs. There's some wrinklage. The tennis shoe look with the big tongue and the top coming up over the leg. Some laces, but no not. Again, there's something ethereal at work. Same thing for the arms. That leathery look down to a cuff at the wrist and then some gloves with this silver design on the back, which is cool because that ties back to here and then up to here and here and here. But I think it's the head that bothers me the most. It's a skull floating above the neck in some blue fire, but it doesn't quite capture the look of the character. I wish it was thinner around the bottom and then the skull may be bigger floating higher and then higher flame. Also because of the design itself and how it blows out the top of the collar, all you get here is a swivel. It looks too small. It's like a turtle head going down into the torso. Butterfly joint at the shoulder. That hinges up a little past 90. Swivels around and again this is a softer material so you get that out of the way. All the way. Rotation at the bicep. Double elbow. Oh yeah. Most of the way up. At the wrist there's swivel. There's hinge side to side. There's a finger joint that opens all four. I liked it at first. You can grab all kinds of stuff but I, it, it drops stuff too often. Ball joint at the torso. Nice hula hoop and range. Then there's also a swivel at the waist. Kind of spinning meat because you have swivel up here too. There's a swivel at the waist. Brings it up to here and like I said that's rubbery, gets out of the way. Still doesn't come quite 90, but it's not terrible. Back, out, all the way. Better in Spider-Man. There's a swivel at the thigh. Double knee, oh, what's going on here? Not quite, but if I push 
really hard. Bing! The ankle hinges back, but the shoe runs into the, well, the other part of the shoe, the sculpt back here. Forward, forward facing pin for rocker, and there's a toe joint. For accessories, Eternal Voyager comes with a drum shotgun, which I'm assuming is this. And yeah, I'm reading that off the Amazon listing. Nice detailed sculpt, and it's not the same on both sides. This side is actually more detailed, but I can't complain about that. That looks good. What I usually do with this line is put the trigger finger through that and then attempt to close the grip. And sometimes it holds, and sometimes it doesn't. Also comes with a proximity launcher, which I guess, again, is this. And I think somebody was saying that one weapon for Eternal Voyager and then one weapon with drift is actually from the four inch line. And this does seem a little small, but at the same time, I don't know what it is in the first place, so, I'm okay with this being a pistol. Well, okay, that kind of proves that this is a smaller scale because it doesn't even go over his fingers. Yeah. There's the game plan back bling, which, oh man, I, I think I love this. That's the easiest, just plugs right into his back, and yeah, that completely works for me. There's a large shield potion. We've seen this several times. Nice little sculpt. There's some silver. I love the fade from darker color to lighter. Then there's also this slot in the back, which I've just always put like this and then you close it and he can kind of hold it. But then probably my favorite here is the Cosmic Cleaver Harvesting Tools. And I like this design. It's techy. It kind of kicks forward and back and smaller handle. But I love the translucent blue up here at the top. More than that, there's two of them. And there's just something about dual wielding some axes. But again, because of the opening hand, I get what they're going for. Some of these are ex Toy Biz guys. Those all had opening hands. It's kind of nostalgic, especially if you did those early Marvel Legends, but it's not working for me. My other favorite accessory is that this pops off and you can pop this <laughs> blue Hulkbuster helmet on. And that fixes my proportion problem a bit. It looks bigger, it looks like there's a head in there, but it still doesn't give it any articulation at the top. Well, besides swivel back and forth. And it does kind of look down too, but you can fix that by arcing back. But overall, I like this look better. It just seems, again, more proportionate. Have some asymmetry here with this strap on the back have this button or whatever the hell this is up on top. Steam release. <laughs> Next up, let's take a look at Drift. And Drift is just more the same with this line. We're used to the articulation. We're used to the style. It's just, hey, if you like the rest of the line, you're going to like these new figures too. But Drift does come with this soft rubbery jacket. Good paint work on it. It's all nice and crisp, but it is a bit candy shell. Don't get me wrong. It's nice and flexible, but it is one piece up to the collar and then down to the sleeve leave which gets in the way of arm mostly but it's easy enough to just crank the arms back slide it off and you have <laughs> essentially a drift figure underneath oh some tight detents right there it does look like it was sculpted to accommodate this big jacket so it's kind of gappy here and you see more of the butterfly joint up front but I'm not gonna grab about that because it gives you a bit more movement. I feel like this is one of the cleaner feeling figures in the line. It doesn't have a bunch of bulk to it to get in the way of some of the joints. I have the pinkish hoodie with this nice gold zipper right there. Not a lot on the back, but hey, again, you're supposed to have this over it. Sleek arms down to this pink stripe, but then you get into a thick glove cuff and then some gold on the back of the glove that ties down to the gold shoes. The legs continue that sleek look. They're thin. It has pockets on the outside of each one, but other than that, a little wrinklage, but Mm, yeah. And then up at the head, you have this mask and it ties it all together. That's why I don't mind the plainness of this design from the neck down. You get to the head and that's where your eye is drawn. Boop. And it looks great. It brings in all the colors, the pink, the white, the gold, the black. And the face is removable, even though this figure doesn't come with alternate masks or faces, but you can pop on any of the others from other figures. So if you want a hooded Jonesy, you can do that. Jonesy? Is that Jonesy? But having that off, you'll notice that the hood is actually attached up here, not to the torso. And that leaves some movement, but it's glued all the way to the back. So it's pretty stiff back here. You're not going to look up, but you can bring it down because of the hinge in the neck right there. You can get some swivel out of it side to side, and it looks good still because the hood's not covering the face. It's floating with the head itself. Still no tilt though. Forward and back on the butterfly joint at the shoulder. That hinges, oh man, like I said, that is very, very tight. Hinges past 90, rotates all the way around. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow, oh yeah, all the way up. Hinge at the wrist and then swivels. There's your fingers. Ball at the torso. You can feel a catch somewhere. 
but it still has full movement. Swivel at the waist. Swivel at the hip comes forward, back, out. Oh yeah, beautiful. Swivel at the thigh is lower this time around. Double knee, again. Doesn't quite go all the way, unless you force it. Bah! Swivel at the mid thigh, but it's not very intrusive because it's fairly round, so it doesn't break the sculpt a lot as you turn it. Hinge at the ankle, goes back, forward, forward facing pin for some rocker, and then a toe joint boop, goes that far. Drift comes with a tactical assault rifle, and I like this. It's silver, it's black, it's slightly cartoony, but not as cartoony as we saw earlier in the line. I don't know, I feel like I could like swap this over to maybe G.I. Joe or something. Do 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 do. Because of that trigger finger, I'm hoping that it's a better grip here. Yeah, it seems like if there's a trigger guard, it likes to hold it a bit better. Not too secure. You bump it and it's gonna fall out. There's also a suppressed sniper rifle. It returns to the cartoony look, and again, this is a four inch scale slipped into the six. I don't know if this was a mistake or what, but this is too small. Oddly enough though, it actually holds this better, but <laughs> comes with a backboard back bling, which is Drift's face on the bottom of a skateboard. And the wheels do actually turn. It does roll. That can go back here and hey, that looks nice. But will it fit his, oh, yep, it will. Okay, it fits his foot peg too. There's a shadow stone consumable, which is <laughs> just a bottle of some kind with a pink lightning bolt on it. But there is a hole on the other side. And like others, that slips over the thumb. And then you close the hand and... Come on, for daddy, one time. Hmm. I think this is the storm flip. It's the only other thing listed, and this is the other accessories. Or is it a mother box? Crossover! And then there is the dual edge harvesting tools. It fits his design perfectly. There's the pink, there's the gold, there's the red. Kind of wish that was sculpted chain, but at the same time, I like the jagged look of it. And again, there's two. I love dual wielding characters. Nothing wrong with that at all. Then there is X-Lord Scavenger. And with X-Lord, we move a little bit more into my personal favorite aesthetics. There's some skin, there's some armor. There is a helmet that looks like a helmet. It looks junky, post-apocalyptic. There's some grunge to it, like the dirt effect that they've thrown in in a couple places. It's nicely asymmetrical, all the armor's over here, which makes sense if you're attacking with this arm, you're guarding with this arm. The anatomy, the musculature is a bit cartoony, but and it could pass if you threw this into a Legends or Joe display. The pants kind of call back to Drift. They're a bit plain, but there is this buckle coming around the leg, and it has this overlay with this, I guess, pouch on the side? And the belt comes around, crisscrosses down to a buckle, and then this hangs down. But it is soft material, so it's not going to get in the way of the leg. And then it's thin until you get to the shoe, and then the red stands out. Well, okay, the red calls back up to here. Nothing wrong with shoes standing out at you. Shoes standing. <laughs> I walked right into that one, didn't I? Another that I look under the armor, the arm actually has some sculpt to it. It's not just the plain arm on the left side painted blue. It looks like he's actually wearing a sleeve or something. The torso overlay is also loose. Again, not going to get in the way of the arms. And it's completely loose, even though it seems like it's supposed to be glued in this peg hole right here. So I guess if you wiggled around enough, you could take it off. The head doesn't pop here, which is okay. It doesn't come with an alternate look for the head anyway, and I wouldn't change it even if it did because I love the look of this. It's either in the future after bad things happen or it's from a long time ago when bad things happened, I guess. I will say though, I did have some trouble with the detents in the shoulder on drift, but here, I've loosened it up a bit, but my God, are these tight. To the point where I feel like I've stressed the peg going into the arm right there. Yeah, go down. Also, no tilt again, but the neck hinge works great. Looking up, looks down, swivels. Once again, forward and back butterfly joint, but doesn't seem to move as far as some of the others. Arm hinges up, gotta get it to about 90. Swivels around, you can get the shoulder armor out of the way, or it just <laughs> runs right over it and gets out of the way. Swivel at the bicep, double elbow, oh. Pfft touches his own shoulder. Hinge at the wrist and rotates, finger joint, ball at the torso, and I get, forgot to mention the tattoo work here. It does go between the two, but in neutral stance, well, okay, that's not bad. But moving that ball joint, eh, pretty good hula hoop. Again, a swivel at the waist, swivel at the hip comes up, I mean, it gets in the way of itself. Even though this moves, it still runs into the crotch piece. Not great. Back, still goes all the way out though. Swivel at the thigh, double knee, I think, oh no, the musculature gets in the way. Whee! 
Again, thigh swivel, hinge at the ankle, goes back, which is not bad for a high top shoe, really. Forward, tongue kind of gets in the way. There's some rocker, and then a toe joint goes uh, uh, that far. That's tight. Scavenger comes with a mushroom consumable. It's a mushroom. Again, I love the fade from lighter to darker on top. Does have a hole. I'm guessing that's for his thumb. I'm just gonna press it on until it sticks. There, that works. Comes with a suppressed legendary assault rifle. Again, this is one of those things, it's slightly cartoony, but if you wanna, you know, give this to other lines or something, I feel like it'd work over there too. What are we looking at here? This works. See, sometimes it works and I'm like, oh, I'm happy, that's awesome, there's a point of articulation. But when it doesn't work, it's frustrating as hell. Let me at him! Comes with a crossbow, and I really like this. There's some black paint on it it's a big arrow <laughs> you do not want to get shot with well you don't want to get shot with any kind of arrow really but that that'll uh put a hole in you i'm guessing this is holding some kind of rope or something or canister or something and i think the big difference here is that x lord's hand is tighter than the other two i've looked at already so when you get the grip on there it's a grip. So maybe it just needs some glue or some tightening or some floor wax or something. Comes with a legendary revolver. And that's not bad at all. I like the light brown paint in contrast to the shiny plastic. Again, you get the finger in the guard and at least with X-Lord, you're not going to have a lot of problem. Are you talking to me, punk? And then for the third time in a row, we get dual wield with the fang saw harvesting tools. I like to turn voyagers. I love drifts, but these are amazing. These are my favorites. These will tear a guy up. So of course they're going to be the biggest pains in the ass for X-Lord to hold. It's thick side to side, but it's stubby this way. So it doesn't quite get into his trigger finger grip unless we do this. It does work this way really well though. That doesn't bother me at all. Oops, almost forgot his spiked satchel back bling. And at first I thought it went this way and it flares out, but then I realized, oh, the peg is on this side so it goes like this because this is the flap that opens up the top. It doesn't wanna go all the way on. It kind of sticks out. Yeah, that just kind of looks wrong. It definitely goes this way. Ma, going to school. And then finally, we'll take a gander at Fish Stick. Yup, official. Fish Stick is my favorite of the wave. It's just so oddball, but fun looking. It's a goldfish with a body that... Just... <laughs> yeah, it's got arms, it's got torso, it's got crotch, it's got legs, but there's just something off. Besides it being a goldfish, you know? The clothing looks... <laughs> I don't know what this is. It's almost like a plastic bag with sewn parts on. Again, it's not symmetrical either. But then the turquoise sets off nicely against the orange and the yellow of the actual skin tones. Has a belt going around. Here's a pouch. Nice silver paint. Just punched in. It's the small things like that that make me happy. But then you get to the second one and it's not painted. So uh, same thing on the one on the back. But then the arms and the legs, besides a couple of just lines sculpted in, they're just the odd shaped, no muscles, kind of twisty, turny, almost like, well, I guess goldfish fins. You know how they, that's what the legs remind me of. That does make it not the, of course you're gonna stand this time because I just had it standing, but if you're trying to get poses and down and around action-y, the feet are small and it's hard to find a balancing point. Call upon all the powers of posing. And there you go. But as wild as the rest of the figure looks, it's up at the head that makes me feel like this is an army of some kind. They're just mindless army drones. You know, they send them into battle and it's just... And there's nothing wrong with that. It's the same stitch work as the body. And really, we see that a lot on other figures too. Oh, wait, these are painted brown and it's not painted on the back. But it is painted on the back of the hat up here and the hat's up on top. There's some stitching. There's whatever this is and a strap to hold it on. But the strap around here is beautifully positioned or they integrated the swappable face gimmick to utilize that nicely. But while the body is fairly smooth, you get up to the head and you have these bumpies sculpted in between the eyes. And the eyes <laughs> just has that distant look like there's nothing going on back there. His school of fish done swam away. But it's a big open head. There's a hinge at the top of the neck with a, I'm assuming a ball up there. So it does look up, down, oh, a little bit of tilt. Lots of swivel. Butterfly joint at the shoulder goes forward and back. Oh, actually forward's not bad. Big old detents at the shoulder goes, oh, way past 90. Rotates around, swivel at the bicep, double elbow. Oh, pfft. 
all the way. Watch. You know, reaching his back. Wide open hinge at the wrist. Swivel. Grippy hand. I was going to say not as much movement here, but it's about the same. Swivel at the waist. Legs swivels forward. Back. Out. <laughs> swivel at the thigh. It kind of angles to miss this big jawed purr looked out here. Double knee. Oh, it works against itself by curving out away from the butt. Boop. Hinge at the ankle goes all the way back, all the way forward, forward facing pin for some rocker. I guess that's a toe. For accessories, Fish Stick has an infantry rifle. Not bad, it has the brown, it has the several metal parts, the strap, oh, it's not the softest. In fact, it feels like it the articulated fingers weren't really made for this kind of rifle holding. So it's a good thing that he also comes with a drum shotgun. Yep, the same one we just saw with Eternal Voyager. And I don't even mind because I like this shape. But that drum is heavy, so it'll drag the fingers open whenever you try to get them to hold it. And this whole time I've been messing around with it and really... If it's holding the weight on this side, there's not so much stress on the fingers themselves. When you get it into two-handed poses, it is better. Comes with a fishing rod, and that's all it says is fishing rod. So I guess it's a weapon of some kind? It's fish stick. It comes with a fishing rod. I'm not going to try to explain it. There's a saltwater satchel back bling, and it's a goodie basket. He has a barrel, and it ties up at the top, and it has this hanging off and this hanging off. It's not as nice as the other back blings. This sticks way out, and I'm sure it does this in the game. I'm sure it's accurate, but for me, it just doesn't look very pleasing. Then there's the bootstraps harvesting tool. And as always, the harvesting tool here carries the motif of the overall figure. Here's your boot hanging off and here's your clay pot again and a little bag of something. But otherwise, it's a stick for fish dick. But this is the only figure in the wave to not have dual wielding harvesting tools. So instead, you get alternate face plates. There's the nothing going on face. There's the happy to have nothing going on face. And then there's the surprised to have nothing going on face. And that's easy enough. You just grab the eyeballs, pop off the face, take an alternate one, push it on, and it's hours of joy. Size wise, all of them stand at about six and an eighth inches tall. And as always, that's gonna scale beautifully with the rest of the line. This line is closer to six inch scale, so it doesn't quite match up with McFarlane's seven inch scale Fortnite line. But again, not knowing the property and characters like the McFarlane Dyer that you can crunch down a bit, I don't mind mixing and matching. That does mean you can fudge into other lines like G.I. Joe though. I have no problem making X-Lord a random dreadnought or something. Or even if you're looking for some Star Wars fodder, it fits there too. Add some wackiness to your Marvel Legends shelf, maybe? Or give your random Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles some friends or foes. So at the end of the day, more fun additions to what is already a fun line to begin with. One of the cool things about this line is the consistency. If you've bought previous figures here, you already know the design scheme, the engineering, the overall aesthetic of the line. At this point, if you're into it, you're buying it for the designs, the characters. I know some people are just going after Fish Stick and Peely and Beef Boss because they're so wacky. But with X-Lord and Drift, some people are looking for custom fodder. Take these, make them into other characters that'll fit into their other toy lines. Or hell, with X-Lord, you can just take as is and put it into, say, G.I. Joe, and you have another character there. That's all if you're not even into Fortnite. But if you are into Fortnite, the character selection here, they're just running with it, and it seems like there is no end in sight. But Jazzwares, let's, let's talk for a second. The shine has worn off the articulated fingers. Just to get them into neutral poses where they're just holding weapons, especially Eternal Voyager, man, trying to get them to grip a gun or their weapons or their harvesting tools, it's not fun. There was nostalgia at first, again, calling back to the old Toy Biz days, but oh man, the honeymoon's over. But it doesn't make me hate the figures or regret getting them because I love these. These will go with all the rest of my Fortnite stuff. Or in the case of X-Lord, again, he's going over and bolster the Cobra troops. Hey, you better change this. It's not much of a threat <laughs> because I'm still buying your stuff. But that is my one big huge gripe for this line. The fingers are just frustrating. If you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. I told you I'd get them. What are you looking at?